Hello everybody, welcome to a tutorial video. So today we're going to be doing some dry brushing technique. Now this is a Frankenstein model kit that I built a very long time ago. This is one of the old Aurora kits, however there are some modifications. What we have right here is a posthumous production wool jacket and a replacement Karloff head which does look a little bit chunkier as far as it goes. Now the whole reason behind this is this is from the Son of Frankenstein movie and that was the third one in the original Universal Frankenstein features and at that stage Boris Karloff had gotten a little bit larger than he was in earlier films and that's due to him actually being able to eat a bit more from the original Frankenstein when he was still sort of a starving actor just starting out. By this time he was well established. Now what we have here is the Frankenstein wool jacket and that's what I'm going to actually dry brush. So when I painted this a long time ago, this is about a decade old now this kit, maybe even longer, I used trim clad gloss, or sorry, trim clad red primer on here and I sprayed the jacket and then what I did is I added in a wash which was a mixture of basically all the enamel junk at the bottom of my brush cleaning bottle and that's what's all in here. And at the time I thought this was pretty good and I didn't need to go any further. But now that I've been doing Games Workshop figures for all these years, I realize that this is only halfway done. So using these Citadel paints today, I want to use Scrag Brown and that will be our first layer on here, followed by a layer of Deathclaw Brown and that will bring up the highlights. So uh, let's get this all set up and do a little dry brush on that jacket. Now this is going to be a sort of interesting proposition because I'm not actually going to remove Frankenstein from his base in order to paint this, nor am I going to break the model into pieces to get at that sweater, or the vest I should say. So I'll just let him kind of sit on his own here for a minute. So here's our Games Workshop Scrag Brown. Now what I'm going to do of course is shake this up, get the strobe light effect going, and then I'll just pop the lid on this. Now this is a, an acrylic water-based paint. So I do have this stiff brush. This one I got in a Walmart pack. And as you can see, the bristles are very stiff on it. And that's what you want on the dry brush. So you're just going to barely dip this in and uh, take a little bit out. Now I do have this plate here. And that is just to be used for my brushing. Now, let's see here. The thing about this is you want to start from the top and work your way down. And you're just going along with enough pressure to uh, hit the tops of the raised area of this wool vest. So now you can start to see here that this is getting a bit brighter. And that's really what you want. Now, you just want to... This is dry brushing, so you just want to... Um, get the paint out of the brush. You're not actually painting this thing the next color. You still want a, a lot of those older layers and uh, the washes down below to still be able to visually transfer through. And I got to be careful not to strike the bottom of his arm here. So overall we are starting to get this. Now there are laces in here too, so I've just got to be a little careful there. Now what I'm, I'm going to paint this dry brush color all the way around on this uh, wool vest. And that is to bring it up from the more uh, red look down below here. And then when I apply the Deathclaw Brown, you can see it's quite a bit lighter. That one will come from the shoulders down as if it's uh, coming from the sun, and that the light is from the top. And that's what's going to make this vest pop up and look really, really good. So again, you're just using the pressure of the brush itself. You're not actually pushing in deep. But already you can see just how much this is really coming up. Again, this is actually looking better than how I painted it a decade and a half ago. <laughs> and that red, the uh, deep primer red, 
will be at the very bottom of this layering. So again, just look at how nice this is turning out. I'll also have to go into these rips and everything that I had from before with some other browns. I'll need to figure out what those colors are. Because this is enamel paint, the original color, and we're applying an acrylic based on a system designed by Games Workshop uh, for layering and all this other sort of thing. So I really don't have the proper base colors from Games Workshop. I've used my own colors and now I'm going over top with Games Workshop colors. So again, trying to find the proper match is going to be something. So I'll finish doing this dry brushing and then I'll show you what it looks like with the Greg Brown. So now here's the Frankenstein wool jacket after that little bit of Scrag Brown. And already you can see that it is quite bright now. It's not as red as it looked at the beginning of this video. Again, really, really nice work. And it's so simple just to dry brush in there. Now one thing that I will have to correct here are some of these uh, strings down here that ended up getting a little bit covered with the dry brush effect. But overall, I mean, it's not too bad, is it? So there we go. Once you catch it in the light, it looks pretty good. So next up, we will do the Deathclaw Brown. And like I was saying before, we're going to go from the top down, just like the sun does. So here we have Frankenstein from the top down, and the camera is looking as if it was the sun itself going straight down here. So what do you see? Well, you see up to here which is basically the center point of his back. He is tilting forward a bit, so you can see this part. So this is where the sun would be hitting, as well as the tops of the shoulders, and then down the front just a bit, right up to like the high center of his chest, just right across where his arms are sticking out, really. So that's what we're going to highlight here with our Deathclaw Brown, which is a lighter color. Now, normally I would clean out the brush between colors, as you can see, it is sort of dirty right there. But as you can also see, this is not tracking any paint on my fingers. So whatever paint discoloration in here is uh, dried up and absorbed by the brush. So again, we will be shaking up our Deathclaw Brown. And with the same technique here, just gently tap in and then wipe off the excess onto our plate down here. And then we should be able to dry brush with the lighter color. And hopefully everyone can see that this is lighter. <laughs> so can you see that it is actually a lighter color? I hope so. So again, I'm just using the pressure of the brush. I'm not actually forcing anything down here, as it were. So there we go. Now remember, you just want to hit this on the upper ridge right here and not like try to go in under his arm because that is in the shadows. That's not where our sunlight is hitting. Sunlight is going down to the back right there. So that's what you want to want to have. So I will continue with dry brushing here and then I'll put the Frankenstein back in this position so you can see how it looks. So now you can see that this is quite brighter up here on the top end, but if I turn the model a little bit here, you can see down below that it does darken out. So again, that is really what it's supposed to be like. So very nice effect on here. And what I think I will do is I've got a few other parts that are bothering me with this that I never actually did the dry brushing on. Now, one of those is, of course, the pants. So if I do a bit of dry brushing, all these seams should show up. And then the other thing is on the arms for both the gray here on the inner shirt, as well as the black here on the arms. Now, it did sort of get polished a little bit, so it is sort of shiny, as you can see there. But it's not really the look I want to go for. Oh, and on top of the hair, 
it just looks so flat without a dry brush. So what I'm going to use is a couple of different Games Workshop gray colors. I will line them up and show, them, show you what they look like. So we're going to paint Frankenstein's sleeves and pants with something known as Dirty Brown from the Games Workshop, which would have originally been the uh, Abaden Black and then Nuln Oil. And then following that is uh, Skaven Blight Dinge. And we also have Storm Vermin Fur as the lighter color. So you'll notice that one of these layers is a bit darker and the next is a little lighter. And I want to do Frankenstein's hair with a different type of brown, which I think is a blue-black, sorry, not a brown, the blue-black color, just to make his hair look different from the clothes he's wearing. So I will do that dry brushing technique again with the two colors, and we'll see what that looks like. So here's what Frankenstein looks like after we added in the Skaven Blight Dinge. And I will just rotate this around. So now you can see on the pant legs, there's a bit of a higher uh, color value definition on here, and that's what we were going for. Now, this is just the first layer, and on the first one you want to go around everything. That brings the color balance back up from the very dark parts of it. And then when we come in with our next color, which is going to be the Storm Vermin Fur, that's where we want to use the sunlight technique. So again, if we look at Frankenstein here, as if the camera was the sun coming down, you would see that the lightest points are going to be off this shoulder and rolling out here and here. And then I do believe there'd be quite a lot coming off this back leg just because it sticks out quite a bit here. So basically from where this ridge is and down, maybe a little highlight here and there, just a little on the pants. I don't think there would be anything up front here because the sun is coming straight down, like his upper body is covering all that. So just in the back on the legs and up on the tops. So I will dry brush this on and show you what it looks like. And here's our Frankenstein now with the lighter color up on the tops of the sleeves. And you can already see that it is brighter. Same with the back of the leg here. So let's just move this around a bit so you can get a bit of the color definition. See how it is on the back of the leg and then up on those sleeve tops compared to the rest of the sleeve where it gets darker. So that's basically what you want to do for the dry brushing technique. And now I want to add some lighter colors up to the sleeves. So you can see how they are now. I'll do both phases off camera and then we'll take a look at it. Now here's our Frankenstein arms right here. And this is a bit of Ulithin Grey with Scar White on the top here in the dry brush. So again, you can see just how much this improved that grey. You can actually see a lot of the texture onto the sleeves, and now it stands out a lot better. So overall, I think Frankenstein is looking really good. The only thing left to do is the hair with that blue-black colouring. Now you can see that I've added a bit of blue-black into Frankenstein's hair here. I don't know if it's quite right or what you normally would see, but what we have is the Dark Reaper, which was the layer going on first, followed by the Thunderhawk Blue, which was second. Now Thunderhawk Blue is only on the top where the sun is coming down, and the Dark Reaper is along the sides. So if I just turn Frankenstein here, now you can kind of make it out. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Did I get this right? Are these the colors that you would have used? Or would you have done something different? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video of my Frankenstein rework. Do you think it does look better? If so, let me know in the comments down below. How would you go about improving this? We'd also like to know that too. So once again, thank you for watching this video all the way to the end, and we'll see you in the next one.